somebody asked on our jam board for the Mark challenge in Mark chapter 1, baptism of Jews pre-Jesus versus baptism of Christians. Did this continue? Where baptism sort of gets its origin is in the Old Testament, in the Torah, the law that God gave through Moses. And some of these laws have to do with ritual purification, making oneself clean. And sometimes you would only have to cleanse a part of your body, and other times you would need to wash your whole body. An example of this would be if a person came in contact with a dead body, then they would need to wash themselves completely. And this practice is called mikvah, which is a bath for ritual purification. This was very popular among a Jewish sect called the Essenes, who some believe may have been the community that John the Baptist was a part of, or at least the community where he received part of his training. And their community rules required repentance before baptism, which is interesting because John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, Mark's Gospel tells us. Um, this practice is all, was also used as a part of the conversion rites for entering the Jewish faith. And many Jewish communities continue these tra traditions to today. So both for conversion and also for ritual purification, it has continued. There was a question about Mark 1 that asked, Does heaven tear open today? And this is referring to when Jesus came up out of the water having been baptized and heaven tore open and the spirit descended on him as a dove. And I think this is a wonderful question. And I want to point out first that what Mark was likely pointing back to as he wrote that was this prophecy, this cry really in Isaiah chapter 64, where the prophet writes, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. This cry of the prophet's heart that God would tear asunder heaven, put heaven completely aside and come to earth and be with God's people. Uh, this is the cry of all of our hearts. And of course, in Jesus at Christmas, we recognize that God did rend the heavens. God tore heaven apart to come to us on earth. And at Epiphany, um, at Jesus' baptism, we see it happen again. The Spirit descends um, to bless Jesus. God rends the heavens once more to be with Jesus. And I believe this does continue to happen today, that heaven and earth are sometimes so near to each other, and sometimes it seems as if God rends the heavens. God tears heaven apart to come to be with us. We know that God did this in Jesus and in the Spirit, and we believe that God continues to do this as God ministers to all of his children today. And ultimately, our longing is like the prophet Isaiah's longing, that God would finally rend the heavens and come down to completely be among us. And this is our hope in the book of Revelation, that God's home would be with God's people, that God would live among us, and that we would live in God's city, that there would be a new heaven and a new earth with nothing separating the two anymore, but they would be one and the same. So to answer the question, yes, I believe it still happens. And I believe that it's the hope of the Christian life that it will not need to happen any longer because the two will finally be one.